Hi everyone. In this week's chemistry scholarship tutorial session, I'm taking up question 1b from the 2018 exam. In this question, we have a reaction happening between two components of a rocket fuel mixture. The first is ammonium perchlorate and the second is aluminium. Now the ammonium perchlorate makes up 74% by mass of our total amount of rocket fuel. The other 11% is aluminium. One of these two reagents is present in excess. We have more than enough of it. Uh, the other reactant will be our limiting reagent that we'll run out of first. So one of the first things we'll need to do is to calculate which of these two reactants is our limiting reagent. Now the end goal for this question is to calculate the energy released in this reaction. That's Q. And we know, we remember, that enthalpy change is equal to Q divided by N, and when we rearrange that equation, we know that Q is equal to the enthalpy change times N. We do not know either of these values, but we're going to figure them out. First, we'll figure out which the, of the two reactants is our limiting reagent, and we'll convert that to moles, which will give us our N value. Second, we're going to work with enthalpy changes to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction here, giving us this value. And then we'll be able to calculate Q. Okay. So first, let's figure out which of these two rocket fuel components is our limiting reagent. We know that we start with 590,000 kilograms of rocket fuel. It's quite a big amount. 74% uh, of that mixture is ammonium perchlorate, and 11% is aluminium. So if 74% of that total amount is ammonium perchlorate, we do the maths, and we figure out that equals 436,600 kilograms. And we get a much smaller amount of aluminium when we take 11% of our total mixture. Now, we want to convert that to grams and then to moles. So there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So just multiply by 1,000 and then divide by the molar mass given to you in the question. When we take mass divided by molar mass, we'll be able to calculate moles of ammonium perchlorate versus moles of aluminium. So we do that we find that we have a million fewer moles of aluminium, roughly around 2.5 million, versus 3.7 million moles of ammonium perchlorate. So, which one's the limiting reagent? Well, in our equation, we see that it's a 3 to 3 ratio. For every 3 moles of ammonium perchlorate, we need 3 moles of aluminium for them to react to completion to form all of these products. Uh, we could simplify that as a one-to-one -one ratio. So really, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. For every one mole of ammonium perchlorate, we need one mole of aluminium. So, if we have 2.4 million moles of aluminium, we need 2.4 moles of ammonium perchlorate to react with it. Uh, vice versa, if we want all of these moles of ammonium perchlorate to react, we really need the same number of moles of aluminium. We do not have 3.7 million moles of aluminium, so aluminium is our limiting reagent. It determines how far this reaction goes because it will be the first reactant we run out of. So, because of this 3 to 3 ratio, aluminium is the limiting reagent. So we've just figured out N. We figured out N in our calculation for Q. See, I plugged that number in right there. All we need to figure out now is the enthalpy change for this reaction. And they've given us quite an overwhelmingly large amount of data to work with. So, how can we calculate enthalpy change? We know a couple ways. Hess's law is fun. It's pretty complex though. I don't want to spend a lot of time flipping reactions around to figure out um, the enthalpy change for our total net reaction here using Hess's law. So, um, I remember a really simple equation we could use that involves using the standard enthalpies of formation for all of the components in a reaction to figure out the enthalpy change for the whole reaction. And that equation looks something like this, which we've seen quite recently. Right? So the enthalpy change of a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of formation of your products minus the sum of the enthalpies of your reactants. So you can see I've plugged in the enthalpies of formation for all of my products, so aluminium oxide, nitrogen monoxide, aluminium chloride, and water. And I've subtracted from that the enthalpies of formation for our two reactants, ammonium perchlorate and aluminium, right? And you need to multiply by the number of moles in that equation. So you look at the stoichiometric coefficient in the equation, and you multiply by those numbers as well. 
So I've written my equation in terms of variables. Um, now let's see what values we've actually got because this question only gives us a few standard enthalpy of formation. We don't have all of the enthalpies of formation we need for every reactant and product. Let's see what they've given us. For reactants and products, they've given us the values for nitrogen monoxide and aluminum chloride. We're missing two enthalpies of formation for two of our products. And we know the value for ammonium perchlorate, but we don't know it for aluminum. So we've got a few things to figure out. With the data, though, that they've given us, they've given us the standard enthalpies of combustion for a couple things and the standard enthalpies of, vaporation, of vaporization for water. So uh, how can I find out the standard enthalpies of formation for the two components I'm missing here in my products and the standard enthalpy of formation of aluminium? Well, if I'm lost, I'll just start writing out the equation for the enthalpy of combustion for aluminium and hydrogen and see where that takes me. And when I do that... When I write out these equations, I see that the combustion of aluminium with oxygen forms aluminium oxide. In other words, the combustion of aluminium, its equation, looks just like the equation I would write for the formation of aluminium oxide, with one change we've got to make. We know the definition of aluminium oxide formation is the formation of one mole of aluminium oxide. And with the combustion of aluminium, we're only forming half a mole. So to get the enthalpy value for the formation of aluminium oxide, because we need to form one mole of it, we need to double this enthalpy change. And that will give us the true standard enthalpy of formation for aluminium oxide. Likewise, I wrote out the equation for the combustion of hydrogen. Remember, they've given us the enthalpy change for the combustion of hydrogen. So I've written that out. Hydrogen combusting with oxygen, just forming liquid water under standard conditions, so of course it's liquid water. And I see that, yeah, we formed one mole of liquid water. However, it's not the standard enthalpy of formation of liquid water we need. In our equation, it's gas, right? So we've got to convert gas, uh, uh, the liquid water into a gas. That's why they've given us the final piece to this puzzle. They've given us the enthalpy of vaporization for a liquid turning to a gas. So by adding together the enthalpy of combustion, which uh, the combustion of hydrogen forms water, plus the enthalpy of converting water from a liquid to a gas, if we add these two values up, we will get the true enthalpy of formation of one mole of water as a gas. So we've got all of our enthalpy values now. We've got everything we need. You can see right here, just to go over what I've just said, the combustion enthalpy of aluminium is the same as the formation of aluminium oxide if I double that value. So negative 1,676 is my true value for the formation of one mole of aluminium oxide. And for the formation of one mole of hydrogen gas, I take that combustion enthalpy for hydrogen plus the vaporization enthalpy for converting liquid water into a gas to get me a value of negative 241.8. Okay, so now we can plug all of those values into our equation. Um, and we get something like this. So I've plugged in the values here, um, all of the formation values for our products minus the sum of the enthalpy values of our reactants. Um, the one thing I didn't explain is why um, we haven't bothered to figure out the enthalpy of formation of aluminium, which you can see here it's, it's zero. That's because aluminium in its elemental form, formed from its constituent elements, there's no change. If you want to form aluminium from its constituent elements, that's just formed from aluminium. And aluminium turning into aluminium results in no enthalpy change because nothing's happening, so it's, it's just zero. So the enthalpy change for this reaction, when we do the maths, it's negative 2,674 kilojoules per mole. Now we want to calculate this per mole of al aluminium reacting. Our equation we know has three moles of aluminium in, as the limiting reagent. So we divide this number by 3, giving us the true enthalpy change per mole of limiting reagent. Cool. We're nearly done. That was a lot of work. Uh, the last step is to take that enthalpy change value and plug it back into our equation to find the energy released. Remember Q? Here we go. So I've got that value of delta H plugged in, multiplied by the moles of our limiting reagent, and there is our final answer, and to three sig figs in scientific notation. Um, 
And that's the answer. I uh, hope that was worth watching. Thanks very much. See you next time.